In this video, I'm going to cover minimum JavaScript needed to become a React developer under 10 minutes. So let's jump into it. You can define variables in JavaScript using three different ways, var, const, and let. Let's see the differences between them. So variable declared as var are function scoped. Like in this greet function, I have declared a name variable, which is accessible inside this function. But if I try to access that same variable outside the function, it's going to throw a reference error. Var declared variables are hoisted. What I mean is actually you can access the variable before defining them. So in this case, you can see that I can access the name variable before it has been defined. Var can't be redeclared in the same scope. So if you redefine, it, it's going to erase the previous value. So I have this name declared inside a greet function and I have a if block inside that I have redeclared the name variable, which, which is going to erase the previous value of Sandeep and you're going to get the output as Sonia. Now let's talk about let and const. So both let and const are block scoped. So inside this greet function, I have this if block where I have declared a name variable, which is not accessible outside this if block. Because this if statement has created a block scope for this name variable. Let and const are not accessible before they are assigned. So this is going to raise a reference error if I try to access the name variable before defining it. And let and const can't be redeclared in the same scope. So inside this greet function, I have a name which will belong to the greet function scope. And inside this if block, again, I have redefined name variable, which is going to belong to this if block. So if I print, you know, console.log name here, it's going to print Sandeep because that's in the scope of the greet function. Now there is one subtle difference between const and let. Const, you cannot reassign a value. Arrow functions. So you remember the traditional way of defining functions in JavaScript. So we can use a function keyword to define functions in JavaScript. Now there is another way of defining functions, something called arrow function, where I can define function as a variable. If I have only one argument, I can even skip the round brackets and if I have only one statement in that function, I can even skip the return statement. So arrow functions are the most cleaner way of defining functions in latest version of JavaScript. Function default parameter value. Now we can define functions in JavaScript having default value for the parameters or the arguments which are passed, right? So you can see in this say function, I have message parameter where I have defined, defined the default value of hello. So I can call this say function without an argument and it's going to return me you said hello, which is going to pick the default value. And I can call this say function passing some value like nothing and it's going to use that particular value and it's going to return me you said nothing. Destructuring objects and arrays. Say, suppose I want to create different variables from the object properties. I have to use this kind of long syntax, right? So say, suppose I need to create name, age and designation variables. I have to use employee.name, .age and dot designation. But with destructuring, which is much cleaner syntax, you can see I can easily create the name, age and designation values using these curly brackets, which is called a destructuring syntax. You can use destructuring with arrays also, like I have this key codes where I have these numbers, right? So without destructuring, if I want to create different variables out of this array values, I have to create these variables, you know, I have to use this array syntax, zero, one, two index syntax, I would say. But with destructuring, you look at the cleaner syntax here. I just need to use the brackets. I can create different variables like backspace, enter, space, delete, and I can have a equal to sign and key codes, which I'm going to basically destructure here. Array methods like map and filter. Now we can use map and filter functions to create new arrays from the existing one. So like I have this numbers array, 
and say suppose I want to create a new array from this numbers array I can use a map function so basically this map, map function is going to iterate through each element or item of the array and it's going to return me a new item so basically it's going to return me a new array so I'm returning here a doubled numbers array from this numbers array where I'm getting the doubled value of each item or element of the array. So we use map function to basically modify the elements of an array and return a new array. You can use filter function to filter an array. So say suppose I want only even numbers out of this numbers array. I can use this condition so I can loop through each item of the array and I can only keep those items which are even numbers and I can have an even numbers array created using the filter function. Spread operator. We can use spread operator to extract the elements from an, from an array and put those elements into new array. So if you remember, if I want to add a new element into an array, I have to use the push method. But using the spread operator, now I can pick another array and I can extract all the values of that array and put it into a new array, something like this. You can do the same with objects too. So I have two different objects here where inside the employee object, I'm going to spread or I'm going to extract all the properties of company and I'm going to put them or insert them into an employee object using the spread operator. Template literals. Do you remember how we used to combine strings with the variables in JavaScript using the plus sign or we call it the concatenation syntax. But with template literals, we can use this batex. This is a template literal syntax where we can combine strings with variables using this dollar sign and curly brackets. So I'm using this string and variables together to produce this as an output. I can do the same with arrays and even objects too. So I can use arrays and objects inside my te template literal syntax in combination with the strings to produce a uh, different, to produce a string and variables combined output. Imports and exports. Now you can organize your JavaScript code into separate files. So if you see here, I have this greet method, which I have defined inside a greeter.js file. And I'm exporting this greet function using the export syntax. Now I can call this greet function in a separate file called app.js using the import syntax. So I can import the greet function and I can call that function in the app.js file. This is a great way of organizing your code into separate files. Classes, extends and super keywords. Do you remember the old way of creating classes and objects in JavaScript? So we used to write this function with the properties and all the methods, they go into a prototype object. Now using ES6 syntax, the new way we can use the class keyword to create the classes which are going to have the properties and methods and we can create the objects from the classes using the new keyword so that we can access the different properties and method of that particular class. Now you can use inheritance in JavaScript to avoid the duplicate code. So say suppose I have a product class with price, color and brand properties and a two string method. Now there are two different products like shirt and pants which I can create using the extend keyword so that I can reuse the price, color and brand properties and I can have a different properties and methods related to shirts and pants. Async await syntax. Now you can make any function as a async function. What is the meaning of async function is we are making this get GitHub user function as a asynchronous function where if you see here, I'm fetching the data from the GitHub by passing the username. So this await keyword is going to make this fetch call wait here until we have the data from the server side. Now, once we have the data from the server side, this line is going to get executed and we are going to show the response to the user. So basically using async and await, we can load the data from the server side. So we can do the front end to back end interaction in a synchronous way. This is minimum JavaScript for React under 10 minutes.